with Jesus' joy again this morning. Let's start. Let us receive the ministry of my brother all the way from Abuja, Nigeria. Apostle Joshua Selma Nima. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Pastor Dele, I'm grateful. Grateful to you and your wife. Grateful to Lester for receiving me. Amen. Let's lift our hands and ask the Lord to give us a mighty visitation. Even at this final session, go ahead and pray. The Bible says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Are you praying? Let it be from the depth of your heart. Ask him for a visitation. Ask him for an encounter one last time by his spirit. The entrance of his word gives light, gives understanding unto the simple. Ask that the grace will rest upon you that will cause you to be an extraordinary blessing even as far as God's program is concerned. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Again, I want to honor every man and every woman of God in this place. Thank you very much for your presence. And how many of us came with our prayer requests? You have it down already? You still want to write some more? <laughs> Pastor Daly told us his faith grew. Faith can grow. There are four levels of faith from scripture. There's no faith, little faith, great faith, exceeding great faith hallelujah help us in jesus name please be seated god bless you i love the word of god because of its ability to empower men an ordinary man in the presence of light becomes a mighty man a weak man in the presence of light becomes a mighty man Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles hmm, will come to your light, and their kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles will come to your light what is light the bible defines it that which makes manifest is light whatever can reveal the glory of god is light hallelujah praise the name of the lord and it's important for us to appreciate what god has been doing all through this conference there's been a transference of his wisdom there's something in scripture called the wisdom of the just. Luke 1, 17. The wisdom of the just. You will have to be in the kingdom to understand the excellency of that wisdom. Hallelujah. It says, by me, wisdom speaking, kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, with me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Hallelujah. One of the major expressions of the glory of God is his wisdom. There are many expressions of the glory of God, but three of them represent the pillars as far as expressing the glory of God is concerned. Number one is his wisdom. Number two is his power. Number three, wealth. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. There is glory in wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. There is glory in power. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory a glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Hallelujah. The extent of your exploits in this kingdom 
does not just depend on God's love for you. Please listen. The same Lord is rich unto all, but our possibilities are defined among other factors by the extent and the quality of light that we receive. He says, but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. He made many lights, but then he made two great lights, one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. Your dominion is at the instance of light. In fact, Genesis chapter 1 says, He called the light day and the darkness he called night. Profound revelation. That means in the realm of the spirit, darkness is not when evening comes. The moment there is no light, you are in darkness. God's definition of day is not 8 a.m., not 12 noon. God's definition of day is the arrival of light. And weeping is associated with night and darkness. For as long as it is dark, you will cry. But joy comes with the morning. Hallelujah. So this conference has been a feast of light. And I told you at the start of my session that light has the power to transit men. The assignment of light is to insist that you do not remain at that level. It cannot leave you at that level. Hallelujah. That means there is a more superior version of you. I like to use the molting of a snake. You know how a snake molts? Comes out of its former self. Becomes bigger, greater, and more effective. You will look at your former self and not find it again. Because there is a wiser version. A more powerful version. Many believers fail because they do not have privileges like this to be methodically taught the ways of God. Are we together now? The Bible says he showed his ways to Moses. Results happen in the kingdom not by luck, not by guess. It happens at the instance of understanding. God is a God of patterns. Please listen carefully. Everything God creates within it is the pattern for the continuity of that result. So he made man, he made woman and never had to make them again. He designed a pattern within that system that every time you want that result, you find the pattern. And the proof you have found the pattern is the glory connected to the pattern. The glory of God in your finances will only be revealed when the patterns he's designed as far as his economic system is concerned is found. And so Jeremiah 6.16 says, stand in the way and ask for the ancient part ask that's what you do when you do not know the way ask are we together and he says when you find it walk there in it and you will step into your sabbath a man can come into his sabbath it can be clear that the glory of god is at work in your life this is my final session i just want you i hope you're, you're getting something already now, let me remind you of one more thing. Most believers do not know why they exist as far as God's prophetic program is concerned. It's beyond heaven. Are we together now? Yes. You're going to be learning something very powerful. I have one more key and then we'll pray. My life changed when I realized this, that I exist to be a manifestation of the glory of God upon the earth. The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. The weightiness, an investigation as to why an object or a person is that desirable, that worthy of admiration, is called glory. So if you want to study the glory of God, you have to investigate all the attributes of God that makes God God. His holiness, his wisdom, his power. The Bible says we are his workmanship pastor, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had preordained that we should walk in it. So you're not just a believer roaming around the streets of Leicester or roaming around the United Kingdom. No, God is depending on the excellency of his power in your life to get glory. That means every one of us is a vista, a mirror through which the world will learn God. And I hope if you are the only reference men have to know God, you will not misrepresent him. Yeah. Are we together? 
that if I'm the only one who becomes a mirror through which men will learn God, can they praise him when they look at my life? So the pursuit for an excellent life is beyond a carnal pursuit to live and make ends meet. It is your participation as far as allowing the glory of God to be revealed in your life is concerned. This is the correct platform to teach on favor, prosperity, and all of that. The moment you do not connect any pursuit to divine purpose, it becomes carnality. Carnality is not because of what you are seeking. It is the fact that whatever you seek does not have a kingdom purpose connected to it. So prosperity becomes a cancerous and destructive message if you cannot reveal how the role it plays in revealing the Christ. You get that now? So the entire circumference of the believer's work is with respect to your becoming so that you can become a greater expression of his glory upon the earth. The end point of that is found in Galatians 1.24 and they glorified God in me. God can be glorified in a man. God can be glorified in a businessman. God can be glorified in a pastor. God can be glorified in a church. God can be glorified in Leicester. God can be glorified in your church. God can be glorified in you as a parent. Listen, understand the end point and your Christian experience will not become a plethora of burdensome rituals. Many believers hate church and God because of the narrative about the faith life they have been given. Nothing exciting, nothing inspiring. They get saved and come to church and eventually they become angry and weary because they cannot find a sense of destiny. There is no excitement. But when you know that your life should be an ever-increasing revelation, manifestation of the glory of God, you should never have a better yesterday. It's not so because the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. Are we learning? But the key, listen please, the key is not just the knowledge of what God has made available for you, but you must know how to engage it. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. That in as much as the Zoe life, in truth, because the Bible declares that when you encounter the Son, you have life. But whether or not that life will be made manifest is knowledge dependent knowledge dependent not salvation dependent salvation makes it a fact that you are a recipient of the life of god but knowledge releases that which you have received in your spirit to be made manifest are we together it is for this reason he gave unto some apostles some prophets pastors teachers evangelists for the maturing the equipping of the saints that when the saints become mature, they will do the work of the ministry. That together as one body, we will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. Not to, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive. Every conference should make the saints matured. You should gain mastery in spiritual things. You should gain command. You should be able to tame life like an animal on the strength of light. Are we learning? Yeah. You should know how things work. This is why conferences like this are a retreat. You camp in God's presence. Men like Kenneth E. Hagin would hold 30 days or more. You know why? Because the truths required for an excelling life are finite. You can lay hold of eternal life. It is the knowledge of God that is eternal. We will never exhaust the knowledge of him. But the factors that make for dominion are finite. You can exhaust it like a course curriculum. A professor never stops learning, but he's still a professor. He has attained a point of mastery accredited globally. 
this is what you should get to the realm your pursuit and the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully so we must through this conference cover the gaps in our spiritual understanding something i do not know is responsible for my limitation and if you can take that responsibility and cry like blind Bartimeo, thou son of David, show me mercy. God shows you mercy by connecting you to light bearers. And for some of you who have the light, but you do not have grace to demonstrate that light. Because you see, the ten virgins had lamp. The problem was the oil. They were all virgins. It was not an issue of sin or righteousness. It was an issue of wisdom and foolishness. And the wisdom there was that they added oil to the lamp. And the recommendation for those who had lamps without oil was go to them that sell and buy. There are still men that sell. Only that you do not buy with money. You buy with meekness. You buy with humility. You buy with patience. You buy with endurance. Can we pray now? Give me an encounter again by your spirit. Someone is praying. Someone who is tired of this realm, knowing that there can be more, knowing that there can be more, knowing that there can be more. A worship minister knowing there can be more. A man of God knowing there can be more. A parent knowing there can be more. A businessman knowing there can be more. There can be more. I insist. I press for the more. Higher dimensions of grace. I press for the more. There can be greater levels of increase. Greater levels of achievement. Greater levels of exploits. As far as the spirit life is concerned. A few seconds, you are praying. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So we'll have a very short session as I wrap up. I just want to give a charge just to show you one more principle, one more mystery, and then we'll take the time to pray. We'll pray over our request. And then I believe that will be done for the morning. Daniel 11 and verse 32 says, But the people that do know that God, it says they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Hallelujah. Your exploits is at the mercy of the God that you know. But then according to scripture, there are essentially three dimensions of God that he's allowed the saints to explore in knowing him. Number one, you know God by studying his character. Number two, you know God by studying his wisdom, his ways, principles. Three, you know God by studying his power. We're not given the liberty to know all of God, not in this life, not even through eternity. That is what makes him God. However, he designed a curriculum by himself that men can learn him sufficient to excel within this realm. You can study his character. It was on account of that study the psalmist arrived at many conclusions. For instance, the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He is slow to anger and he's rich in love. It is important you understand the character of God because that is what you use to judge prophecies. That is what you use to judge every other thing in life. You see that now? And then you study his ways. Moses prayed a prayer and he said, show me your ways. Five verses later, he said, show me your glory. You would have to know his ways to understand his glory. And then in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning from verse 18, Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus. And among the many things he prayed that they would understand was that their eyes of understanding would be enlightened to understand the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints, I like verse 19, and the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. 
he prayed that we will understand the extent of his power the kind of power that was invested that brought Jesus from Hades to the earth and took him to the throne because when you understand that power it can take you from anywhere to anywhere hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord I hope you still remember all our teachings from yesterday morning the harvest the world of sinners that the believer must redefine the name we call the unsaved for as long as you call them sinners you'll be compelled to run away from them but when you see them as the harvest it plants compassion within you to reach out to them hallelujah and then yesterday we also looked at the fact that it is not enough to be good sowers we must understand the reaper hallelujah and we shared the principles that would help us reap remember yes. we also looked at the life of Ruth as a reaper this morning I want to show you by the Spirit of God something very powerful <laughs> Psalm 92 from verse 12 the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon next verse read with me if you're a Christian those hold on don't rush those that be shall flourish in the courts of our God uh-huh they shall still bring forth fruit in old age they shall be fat and flourishing the final verse to show that the Lord is upright amen Isaiah 61 verse 3 Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes someone say amen, amen. the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness yeah. now that they might be called there is a name he wants them to be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that when they become the planting of the Lord the return on investment is that he might be glorified we explored seeds farmers soils harvests but i want you to know this morning that god is also a sower god does not just give seeds to sowers and bread to eaters he himself is a sower are we together number two his seeds are men you have to understand this as we wrap up this session that God is also a sower and his seeds are men. His soil represents the various regions of the earth. Anywhere in the earth qualifies to be called his soil because the earth is the Lord's. He is at liberty to plant anywhere and he does not violate any principle because the earth belongs to him. So God is a sower. His seeds are men. Are we together now? Assigned territories for some or anywhere across the earth represents the soil where he's at liberty to plant his seeds. Now, please listen. Men like seeds and trees can grow, can flourish, and can become fruitful. Men just like trees, men just like seeds, they have capacity to grow, they have capacity to flourish. They have capacity to become fruitful. Are we learning already? Now, the harvest that God gets from this planting is that he becomes glorified across the nations of the earth. The harvest that God gets from his planting when you become the planting of the Lord, he also expects harvest. And that the harvest he gets from that planting, 
Are we together? Like every farmer who rejoices when he comes to also reap, he is also a reaper, not just a sower. And when he comes to reap from his farm, from his seeds, from the trees, he expects glory, a revelation of his glory. That is his own return on investment. The harvest God gets from his planting is that he becomes glorified across the nations of the earth. John 15 and verse 8. Herein is my father glorified. When you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men, before men, before men, before men, not in secret, before men, that they may see. He wants them to see. If they don't see, even if the light is there, God cannot be glorified. It is not the presence of the light that gives him glory. It is the fact that men are compelled to see. Are we together? That all men see and then glorify your father which is in heaven. Now most believers know that they have seeds. But they do not know they are seeds themselves. Are we together? It's not enough to know that you have seeds. Like I taught you yesterday night, it's not enough to know that you have a seed of whatsoever. You must also realize that as a believer, you are a seed. And that the farmer who plants you is God himself. Are we together? It's called the planting of the Lord. The planting that God goes to the farm and comes to Leicester and brings you and plants you when he plants you there are expectations occasionally he will visit his property and see how you are growing and then at a time he will expect harvest there is nothing god gives a man that he does not expect a harvest from he gave unto one five talent two talent one talent and allowed some time the one with five made five more two made two more but there was one interesting person that man was already angry from you see the bible says he gave them according to his several ability meaning he studied them to do that and at the end of the story you will see he was right the man who had one deserved one are we together and so when he came to demand accountability the man with one said, I know you are a hard man. You see the state of his heart already. Okay, what is your own return? You are a hard man. I've been waiting to tell you this. <laughs> you like to reap where you did not sow. Did you see his understanding? <laughs> you like to reap where you did not sow. So I thought instead of throwing this away, you should be lucky that I even held that one. <laughs> now hear this. Hear what he was called. Wicked, number two, unprofitable. Wicked and unprofitable. What was the consequence? The one talent was collected and not returned to heaven, given to someone else. If you understand my message this morning, you will know how to give glory to God with your life. It's important to know that you are a seed yourself. And that if you found yourself here, whether by birth, by migration, job, work, whatever it is, you must have this consciousness that I am the planting of the Lord. And that in being planted here, there are no mistakes, there are no accidents, whether it's Leicester or any other part of UK, Europe, anywhere at all, or following online, whatever region, I am the planting of the Lord. Are we together? And that God has an expectation over my life. God has an expectation of a harvest. He intends to reap something out of my life. He intends to reap glory out of my life. He intends to reap glory out of my life. The same way, listen, the Bible shows us a picture of what God does when trees don't bear fruit. 
It's not an interesting experience. In one narrative, he cursed the tree. The compassionate God looked at the tree and said, you are receiving from the earth and you are not delivering. And yet the Bible says it was not the time of figs. I thought that was harsh. It was not the time of figs. But because Jesus came close to the tree, he expected his presence to make an effect. Because the rod of Aaron was not connected to the earth. But when presence was introduced, it still bordered. So Jesus comes close to the tree. And the tree does not recognize the effect of his presence. And he cost it. Everything Jesus came close to produce. The man at gate, I mean the man at Bethesda. He said it is not the season. He said I know. But now that I am here. It is not just the sick that should hear him. The tree should hear him too. That regardless what disadvantage. If he is there. He still expects food. Hmm. So when you give excuses and say. It's because I'm coming from another nation. I'm coming from this. God says what then is the advantage of my presence. What then is the advantage of my presence? Moses had everything. They had gold that they got from Egypt. They had weapons of war. They had food. They had the advantage of numbers. But he said, with all of this, if your presence will not go with me, don't send us from here. I'd rather remain even with all of these provisions. But if your presence will not go with me, I will not leave this place. I know the consequences of going no matter how equipped but without your presence are we learning now so i'm going to show you three keys very quickly how to become a fruitful harvest as a person that brings god glory if it is true that you are a seed yourself if it is true that god is a sower if it is true that you are called the planting of the lord then it is also true that he expects a harvest. Sooner or later, he is going to come to your church that he's given you, your business, come to you and ask you, I've shown you mercy. I've shown you grace. I connected you to men. I gave you pastors after my heart. Where is the fruit, the return on investment? We used to sing an old hymn in the Anglican church, um, must I go an empty handed? You see that? Not one soul to greet him. Must I empty handed go? Some of you don't know it. <laughs> Praise God. Men can become trees from seeds. Psalm 1 3. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the riverside the question is by who now you know the answer planted by God himself now look at the character of this tree please look up because this tree was uniquely planted by the riverside it does not have to wait for seasons to produce it does not have to depend on the rain that comes from the sky it is planted by the riverside although as far as producing fruit is concerned, there are seasons because it must grow. It says, but when that season comes, it bringeth forth his fruit in season, and in a strange way, his leaf does not wither. I wish I had time. I would have told you why the leaves of a tree withers. It withers as a principle of conserving itself when seasons change. It will shed some leaves so that it can stand until a favorable season comes. Back in Africa, we call it dry seasons. You see that now? So trees shed their leaves as a principle to conserve themselves. And it says, but this kind of tree, you will never find a withered leaf. And as a result, whatsoever. Remember our whatsoever yesterday? Whatsoever he doeth prospers because he is a tree himself.
Number one, the first key that I will leave with you as a final session this morning, desiring to bring God great glory through your life, is that you must understand the dynamics of fervent, effectual prayer. You must understand the dynamics of fervent, effectual prayer as a tool that can grow a seed to a tree, a tree to a fruitful vine that produces. There is no believer who does not understand and will not invest in strategic, consistent prayer who will ever be able to bring glory to the name of the Lord. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, the Bible says, He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, he says, pray without ceasing. That means be consistent in your prayer. James 5.13, is any man afflicted? The Bible says, let him pray. Mark 11, 24, what things soever ye believe, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. Now, prayer does many things in the life of a believer. Four of them particularly, according to scripture. Number one, the first assignment of prayer, and that is the greater part of the reason why we pray is for growth and transformation. For the average believer, our understanding of prayer is just as a tool for receiving things. I know you have prayer requests, we are going to pray on that. But the primary assignment of prayer was designed for communion, growth, and transformation. Luke chapter 9 from verse 29. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. You can pray yourself into a stronger version of you. You can pray yourself into a courageous version of you. You can pray into a more superior spiritual version. You can pray and transit from a carnal version to a spiritual version. Because the Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Are we learning now? You must invest in prayer. This is the apostolic model that was left with the church in Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayer. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. You must obtain grace, my dear people, especially for those of us with all due respect who have come overseas, do not allow some of the limitations that you find to erode these principles. They are irrefutable. You must discipline yourself to pray. There is no gift of prayer. Prayer is labor. You obtain the doing grace, but you pray. Say, I will pray. I will pray. One more time, say, I will, pray. I will pray. That every time you submit yourself to prayer, it is your participation. Remember, the reason why the seed grows is that it yields to all the processes that are pro-growth. The yieldedness of the seed is what makes it become a tree. Are we together? There is no rebellious seed that produces. The seed stays and submits itself to all of the processes that will transit it from a seed to become a tree. Prayer. Is an irrefutable, non-negotiable principle if you must become mighty. Ordinary men became mighty men when they prayed. So assignment number one of prayer for growth and transformation. Number two, prayer is a platform for obtaining requests and making petitions. Obtaining requests and making petitions. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you pray, like we read in Mark eleven twenty four, there's a connection between desires and prayer. The Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. Ye have not because ye ask not. Ye have not because ye ask not. 
So prayer becomes a platform to obtain requests and to make petitions. Number three, the third assignment of prayer is as a platform to make prophetic decrees and create realities. You can use prayer as a platform to make prophetic decrees and to create realities. Ezekiel chapter 37, I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You can create realities. You can reprogram your climate. You can shift climates in the place of prayer. This is powerful. Prayer is not always about asking God. It is also about speaking to things, using the God-given ability. The first revelation of God in scripture was as a creator. And since he made us in his image and likeness, we are co-creators. You can create realities. Even God who quickened the dead and called the things that be not as though, called the things that be not as though. You can call things. You can frame things. The Bible says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. That everything you see is a child. The mother is the invisible realm. You can call things from the realm invisible to the realm visible. Just because it is the realm of the spirit does not mean it is unreal. Invisible does not mean unreal. Invisible just means beyond the scope of your sight. For instance, there are angels in this place. For instance, God is in this place. But from a physical standpoint, you can only see those that have your material frame. Even science has proven that there are things that other lower animals see that we may not be able to see the way they see it. Hallelujah. The final assignment of prayer, as revealed in scripture, is as a tool for warfare and prophetic intercession. Warfare, warfare, establishing realities as finished in Christ, making them manifest in spite of Satan. The Bible does not hide the fact that there is an adversary who is determined to thwart the purposes of God. Are we together? If you don't believe this, you are going to learn a painful lesson with your life. It is true. It's a fact that there is an adversary. Jesus said the thief, who called him a thief? You want to know when the Bible tells you there is a thief around your vicinity. You want to pay close attention. Ignoring the thief um, may not be an act of responsibility. You don't have to be afraid of the thief, but you must be sober and you must be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, he moves to and fro, seeking for whom he may devour. And he says, be sober, not be fearful, but be vigilant. He will kill anything he can find, steal anything he can find, destroy anything he can find. And I hope you know that Satan also depends on the word of God to know how to attack you. He needs to know what God is giving you. Otherwise, what will he steal? He has to depend on what God is giving you. I sought for a man to stand in the gap that I would not destroy the land, but I found none. Can I tell you, I'm praying that God will raise prophetic intercessors over the city of Leicester. Men who will give him no rest until he establishes Leicester as a praise. Nothing happens within any territory until God finds men, men who are able to partner with his program, even in the place of prayer. One of the major ways we participate in kingdom activities is by lifting up incense of prayer. That the age-long spirits that have hijacked the minds, the thinking of men would come under subjection. I submit to you, and with all due respect to all of you who are medical professionals, I said it yesterday. You have to pray for the spirits that are killing the children with mental health. Don't think it's just a medical issue. It's a satanic issue. There is an intentional programming to literally delude a generation. And if you think it's all about, oh, my child, I think something is wrong with him. I am telling you this. I'm not stupid. You believe me. Satan is very generational. 
he can target an age range and leave the remaining. When he finds out a generation, as a generation have declared their loyalty to the God of heaven, he can give up on them and grow with their children. This is what has happened to many western regions. So you, find, you can find a region where the only people who are serious with God are people, say, from 60 or 70 years. They will tell you about the crusades of T.L. Osborne. And then you find a generation that as a generation, they have decided corporately to reject God. May it not be under your watch. I'm saying this because as we'll be praying shortly, I'm trusting that God will raise prophetic intercessors. Women after the order of Anna the prophetess who will stay in the temple and pray down God's program. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You Listen, overcome. let me tell you this. I didn't start ministry at the federal capital territory of Nigeria. For those of you know, who know Nigeria, I started ministry from a place where you don't last up to three years because of the strong Islamic powers that rest there. I watched people who loved God start ministry and they were shredded into pieces. Listen, there are spirits assigned to territories, given assignments to fight the program of God. If you don't believe this, you, you better believe this. Listen, there are spirits assigned to believers. There are spirits assigned to ministerial offices. They are not assigned to men. They are assigned to offices. When you are Elijah, be ready for Jezebel. When you are Samson, be ready for Delilah. Samson is not just a man. It's a kind of grace. There are spirits that follow certain mantles to destroy. When believers are ignorant, you will allow the program of hell to just prevail, you will complain, but complaining does not stop it. I remember many years ago, I trekked from, I don't know how, I don't know your place here, so I cannot even use any reference, but a significant, at least a one or two hour walk. And I was praying and speaking over that Islamic land. I command the territories, lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted. Listen, mother, if you don't become an intercessor, the devil will destroy your children. He will turn a prophet to become an armed robber. He will turn a daughter destined to be like Esther to be a prostitute. I came tonight in this final session to stir up prophetic intercessors. You must know how to hold the four horns of the altar and to pray, to pray the program of God. Pastors, buy equipment but raise men of prayer. I'm a man of excellence, but it is better to have one mic that works and have 10 people who understand the dynamics of prayer. Not from a fanatical standpoint. Prayer that works. Prayer that is fervent. Prayer that is word-based. Prayer that produces power inconvenience the familiar spirits around your territory drive them with the authority of the saints create a border within Leicester and say thus far have you come no further shall you go listen let me tell you if allowed they will fight your finances they will fight your health am I wasting your time sit down let me show you a scripture Acts chapter 12 let me show you what Satan does when people become complacent and they do not discern when they are not vigilant, when they are not sober. Acts 12 from verse 1. We'll end at 5. Now about that time, watch this, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Verse 2. He says he killed James. What did he do? He didn't advise James. 
because he's a thief when he comes he kills does that look like him you would not see satan in that story but it was him you would see herod like you would not see satan in the days of daniel you would see a parliament but it was still him You will not see Satan in Peter, but Jesus said, get thee behind me. You will not see Satan in Judas, but it was still him. Look his intelligence. He knows how to masquerade himself. He knows how to manipulate systems and men. You must know how to detect him. Now we are seeing killing. It is not about Herod. The Bible says Herod killed James. Now you know. Herod does not kill. He was once a baby. It is Satan that kills. He uses the hands of men, the minds of men, the systems created by men. He killed James, the brother of John with the sword, verse 3, because he saw that it pleased the Jews. He proceeded further. Everybody say proceeded further. <laughs> this is what Satan does. He touches your finances and you keep quiet. He proceeds further. Every time you give flimsy excuses, uh, I, I think it's just um, somebody doesn't like me around my office. I'm sure that's why he proceeds further. His first attack is not his only intended attack. He will test you and watch what happens. You keep quiet, test your child. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he now put, delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers. The church got angry. He said, now James died. Peter is about to die. I like verse 5. My goodness. Lester learned this. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Prayer was made without ceasing by the church unto God for him you can pray for your child as a mother you can say my womb will not produce someone who will be a victim of mental health that was not my covenant with God don't be silent men in this city and in this meeting and following online you must pray don't leave prayer to your wives no create a system pray women pray children pay parents pray churches pray let me encourage you under god don't just smuggle out two minutes and just pray and say in jesus name amen i understand that your system does not give you the kind of liberty that other people may have in other regions and while appreciating that you must see the need for prayer and the value that is derived when you pray please write it as a commitment i will pray number two let's hurry up if you know you are a seed that god is the sower he's planted you in leicester he's planted you in the united kingdom he's planted you across any region you may be connected from even if it's for a season you owe it to invest in your prayer life as your commitment towards your growth to bring him a return called glory. Number two, you must invest in the knowledge of the truth. You must invest in light, invest in the word, invest in the knowledge of the truth. I didn't just say read your Bible. Invest in the knowledge of the truth. John 1, 5, and the light shineth in the darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, and now brethren, he says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, Acts 20, 32, and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed. Why? For the lack of knowledge. 
Listen, the administration of eternal life is knowledge dependent. Knowledge dependent. John chapter 17 and verse 3. And this is life eternal that they may know thee, not just receive thee, know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Hallelujah. Knowledge. Knowledge. When you lack sufficient knowledge, even grace and peace comes at the instance of knowledge. Grace and peace comes at the instance of knowledge. And you must have sufficient knowledge. Don't just have casual knowledge. Don't just have gaps. Like I was teaching my people a little about prayer, a little about fasting, a little about finances. You need high level spiritual illumination. Paul prayed over the church in Ephesus that their eyes be flooded with light. Flooded with light. Jesus gave a parable of someone who lost a treasure in a room. The first thing that man did was to look for light. In finding that missing treasure, he looked for light and then a broom. With that light, he began to sweep. It takes light. It takes light. You have to know how speed happens in the kingdom. You have to know how God protects and preserves. You need to know how God announces men. You need to understand the laws of the kingdom. Job 38 and verse 33. I wish we could have that from NIV. It says, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, KJV says, Can thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? KJV says, Do you know the laws of heaven? And can you set up God's dominion using those laws upon the earth? When Jesus prayed, he said, let it be done in earth as it is done in the heavens. And I hope you know the first earth is you, not just your land. You are that earthen vessel. He wants it to be done in your life. The glory that is seen in heaven, that it be made manifest in your life. My people invest in the word, buy materials, buy the truth, it says. Don't ask to be given the truth. You buy it. You buy the truth with meekness. You buy the truth with hunger. You buy the truth with humility. You buy the truth with patience. You buy the truth with endurance. These are the currencies that buy the truth. And you must be aware of the danger of limited knowledge. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. I want us to read it together. My God. Ready? One to read. Very disturbing scripture. He knoweth not anything yet as he ought to know. There is a standard in the spirit, a standard of light that delivers. There are times that your headlamp may not be bright enough. And in your nation that is very law compliant, they can fault you on having a faulty light. I hope I'm right on that. They can even find you for it. It may not be complete darkness, but because it did not meet the standard. Yesterday, we had the opportunity of visiting your lovely, lovely church building. And I was very touched. Among the many things we discussed, it that stayed on my mind was the fact that pastor was telling me that occasionally the council will come to supervise everything, including the doors. There were specifications. I saw doors there that were torn down already because they did not meet a standard. And I said, that's it. That's how life is. Don't say I know how much, to what degree. Does the realm of the spirit respect the illumination that you have? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. What was common between both of them was light. High level spiritual illumination. I know a little about finances. Tell me how much you know. I know giving produces wealth. That is too small a revelation. You won't prosper that way. If all you know about finances is just giving, my goodness, there is a whole economic system you will have to study. How does God prosper men? Why does he prosper men? What is the dynamics? Are we together now? 
When God wants to give you speed in finances, what does he do? Give you a job? No. Every time God wanted to give men accelerated wealth, he brought men that were already established. If you don't know this, you will not even know what to expect. You need to know how your harvest looks like. When it was time for him to accelerate Abraham, he connected him to Abimelech. When it was time for Lot to receive, Lot went with Abraham. When it was time for Ruth, he connected her to Boaz. Every time God wants to give you acceleration, now that does not compromise on value, but it is his system of advantage. So if God tells you, I will bless you tomorrow, make sure you start paying attention to men. By this time tomorrow, how did it happen? Men. <laughs> Listen, there are times you plant, then you wait, then it grows, then you harvest. That is the character of value. But there are certain things called prepared blessings. So God brings a man to you who is already in his harvest. That is his way of showing you mercy. If you don't believe this, you will spend your whole life looking for money. There are two principal ways resources come to the saints. One, their value, refined, right? And when it has to do with the issue of value, you are intelligent enough to know that just because you are valuable does not mean you will be rewarded. The person at the back end must need your value. So it is God's assignment to keep redirecting your audience until he brings you before people who have an appreciation for the value you carry. Joseph was valuable but he interpreted two people's dreams and still remain in the prison. But when he interpreted the king's dream, it matters whose dream you interpret. Don't tell me you have the gift of it. You may remain in the prison there. When God wants to show you mercy, he will make the king have a dream. You have a restaurant, I know. But for as long as you are serving a certain group of people, you will remain poor, even though you are valuable. When God wants to help you, he will make kings to need you. The wealth is in the palace. So how you get there is God's, that's, that's the God factor. Is it not in your Bible that Paul planted and Apollo watered? Who gave increase? Increase is exclusively. But remember you told me you understand finances. You understand the morale of this? I'm playing with your mind to challenge you. That's why arrogance is dangerous. Thank God for Apollos in Acts chapter 18. The Bible tells us from verse 24 that he was a great man born at Alexandria. Eloquent man, mighty in scripture. He came to Ephesus verse 25. Look at this credential. He was instructed in the way of the Lord. He was fervent in spirit. He spake and taught diligently. Then the Bible puts a disturbing statement, knowing only. How do you give such credentials about a man? And then you say, knowing only. You can imagine, he was preaching in a conference, fervent, <laughs> great man, invited like me, and while he was speaking, knowing only. It's the reason why we must remain humble. You can be so impressed with yourself until you stand in the presence of light, genuine light. The Bible said that was the true light. You know a false light because it stands impotent when it has to do with delivery. It doesn't deliver as intended. You bought fake things. Sometimes you have to test them in the presence of certain kinds of light to know that this is fake currency. You may not see it that way. That's how many people have been carrying lights, lights that have not delivered. It's time for you to mercilessly re-edit your convictions, re-edit your revelations in light of scripture. Don't be so loyal to what does not work. Are we together? Knowing only. I'm tempted to finish that scripture. Let's look at it. Perhaps God is speaking to somebody. Knowing only. Now watch this. Then the Bible says one day he began to speak boldly in a conference like this and there were two strange people in that meeting you see why I honor people when I come because you don't know who is who in the spirit 
You just know people came for your meeting. Just because you sat in front does not mean you are in front. Yeah, that, that, is, that is honor. Now, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. It's a revelation. You see that? True humility is a reaction. These are the things you need to know. That someone may be at the back. Look at this conference here. That's a conference going on there. He began to speak boldly. And then there were two people who were watching. They were seeing the gaps. They were seeing a great person, but they could see, they could, it was clear. The church was saying, my God, Joshua Selman, what revelation. And yet there were two people called Aquila and Priscilla. Watch this. When they heard what he was saying, they waited patiently till the conference was over. Then the Bible says they took him aside. Thank God he followed. <laughs> Watch this. This is a lesson, especially for us, with all due respect, servants of the living God. He took him aside and expounded to him the way of God. Help me. More perfectly. <laughs> Number three. Let's go to our third discussion. So you must understand prayer. Number two, you must invest in high level spiritual illumination. One of the assignments of light is that light controls speed. The most important, about the most important component when you are driving on the streets of Leicester in the night is, are your headlamps it controls speed if your light goes off you will have to reduce your speed because you'll be at a risk running without light hallelujah praise god number three you want to bear fruit you want to bring that return on investment to his majesty you love him enough to want to be a worthy harvest the third and final key and this ends my discuss this morning is that you must contend for genuine spiritual empowerment you must contend for genuine spiritual empowerment genuine spiritual empowerment we cannot buy the ability of the flesh fulfill the purposes of God you have to settle that once and for all the greatest of us cannot be able to birth the program of God in the strength of the flesh I can tell you the program of God is a spirit affair it requires empowerment beyond intellect it, intellect is an advantage don't get me wrong but it's beyond intellect you are contending against demonical forces you are contending against systems and structures that are antichrist. They were built to fight God's program. You will need more than zeal. He said, Tari, I've given you the correct information. You are not ignorant, but don't go that way. Not much will be done. Tari in Jerusalem, he said, until you be endued with power. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, ye shall receive power. You can reject it. You can receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Leicester. You can mention the name of your city because you are not in Jerusalem today. You are not in Samaria. You are not in Judea. You are only at the uttermost part of the earth. Somewhere there, you shall be witnesses unto me, harvests unto me, drawing many to me bringing glory to my name across and within that territory but that happens at the instance of power there are various dimensions of power i can't teach that now but the first of them is the power to become as many as received him even to them that believed on his name he gave them power to become that is the power that changes a man from within that one is, does not produce miracles unfortunately this is the dimension of power we all seek when you desire just power against power, you know, the power to become is what gives you stability, is what gives you longevity, the power to become. 
the power to become, birthing the character of the Christ from within you. Are we together? Yes. Not just a miracle worker, not just a sign producer, but that that power within is an energizing of the spirit. Strengthen within your inner man. Capacity to stand for Jesus, to live for Jesus, to serve him truly. Grants you the grace to endure what you need to endure as far as your journey in the spirit is concerned. Power to become. Many people have not received the power to become. The power to become. You don't have that, your spiritual life will be lean. It will be clear. You know that spiritual health can be perceived. You can stand close to someone and you can perceive. Men by the spirit are given that faculty. It's not unique to others. It's a product of the health of your spirit man. You can perceive health. You can know something is wrong with a person's spiritual life. You may not be able to articulate what it is, but you can perceive. And that perception can be translated through your worship. You can be singing the correct song. And yet people are wondering why the life that should come from that song. They just know that that song is empty. They can't articulate it with words. But you can even kneel down while you are crying. There is an emptiness. That happens also when you preach. You can preach the right thing, doctrinally correct. And yet it's falling upon the people and there is a barrenness. The energy that should come. It's not about shouting or not shouting. It's a spiritual quality. You have to be a spirit man indeed to understand this. Are we together? Yeah. You can be robust in the spirit. And it's discernible that every word that comes from you, no matter how soft, no matter how hard, sometimes you are even limited linguistically. You may not be able to express yourself as much, but the little that comes out of you is energized with such power, power built from within your secret place, energy that cannot be denied. Did our hearts not burn within us? They said. You think Jesus was shouting? No. Met the men at Emmaus. Something was happened to them as he spoke. The Bible says, as Peter spoke, they were caught to the heart. And by themselves, they said, men and brethren, you can't stop here. Men and brethren, what do we do? I'm praying for someone in this conference that in the name that is above all names, whatever has made your spirit man lean, whatever has made your spirit man bankrupt of energy and power, that before this conference is done this morning, let grace rest on you. Let grace rest on you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You're a man of God here. Let me challenge you in righteousness. You will draw people only to the limit of the energy that you command in the spirit. Hear what I'm telling you. You will draw people only to the limit of the energy in the spirit. It's like a pool. It doesn't happen just by publicity. An energy is built from within. Robust, powerful. Sometimes spiritual things are very difficult to articulate in a way that people understand. But you trust me when I tell you this. Hallelujah. It is the reason why your pastor has submitted you. It's an immersion. It's a baptism. Hallelujah. You've been immersed through these thoughts for these days because something is happening to you. You will not know how changed you are. Like Moses did not know his face was even glowing. He left the presence of God. It was those he went to that said, what is wrong? They covered their faces. You will not know the graces that have rested upon you right now until you step out. Then someone who has forgotten you for years, he just remembers. And you think he just remembered. No. No. The realm of the spirit can command, it can lay a weight upon the physical realm. The Bible says, and that night could not Ahasuerus sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. You think Ahas Ahasuerus just decided to bless Mordecai? No. One thing I am sure of is that nothing on earth just happens. Favor does not just happen. People don't just like you. People don't just hate you. People don't just bless you. People don't just partner with you. Your church doesn't just grow. No, it's a reaction. 
Pastor, when I began to study the subject of empowerment because I didn't want to do ministry without genuine empowerment from the Spirit. You will be angry if you do ministry without empowerment because you will propose many things God can do and not be able to defend it. You will tell people God can turn your life around. They will come thirsty and hungry and say, please, can he turn my life around? And then at the end of it, and you see, let me tell you something with members. They can discern limitation. Once they gauge you and they see that this is how exhausted you have been spiritually, they will respect you, but they will find solutions for their lives. This is not a pastor's conference, but I can tell you this with authority. Are we together? The woman left her fetcher and said, come see a man. Come see a man. That will always happen to you when people see genuine power. Let me tell you, there is no civilization invented even up till now that has the power to ignore genuine spiritual power. It doesn't matter what kind of technology. You may be criticized, but the effect of genuine power cannot be denied. Power to heal, power to transform men. That for someone seated here, that by the next time you come to testify and you just say all doors have opened, how do you ignore that? No, the end of all arguments. I am a firm believer in the power of results. Results. Men will bend over backwards and inconvenience themselves beyond proportion if there is a guarantee that they will get results. Many of our practices today that have attracted millions of people, whether medical practices, do you know that some of them, they can even tell you that this drug has a 35% chance 20% chance and yet people can still make do with it. That is how desperate people are for results. Are we together now? Yes. I'm saying that because as we rise up to pray shortly something will come upon you. A grace will rest upon you. That servants of the Lord Jesus Christ you will go back to your altar and all of a sudden a grace you have not seen before. Now listen to me. The Lord Jesus appeared to me many years ago. And when he appeared to me, among the many things that happened was that he stretched his hands towards me and light. There are two people now who will shout under the anointing. I just saw this by the Spirit, the power of God, two of you. Please help them. Will we have ushers here? Two of you. Um, we're just getting to the impartation now. We'll be very fast over it. <laughs> so light came from him to me. And when that light came, you can imagine like taking the sun and putting it inside a human being. How I did not die is something I cannot understand. From that encounter, my life changed. It was like a straight line open from Genesis to Revelation. I started comprehending things I did not study. Scriptures started connecting. I would quote scriptures I could not remember studying. You believe what I'm telling you? And then in one of these visions, I was standing at an elevated place, like an upstairs. And I saw a whole generation of people and they were crying. They said, there's no food and there's no water. And I said, who was the cause? And they pointed to me. And I said, no, I, could, I wouldn't be that wicked. Why would I do that? And then I was about to go and rescue the people. But I was afraid. It looked like some people had wanted to hurt me or something of that sort. But I made up my mind that I would still go anyway. Now watch this. As soon as I opened the door, there was a giant gray-bearded man. Now I know that that was a semblance of the spirit. He stretched his mighty hand and he said, place your hand. He said, we'll walk together. And I placed my hand. 
There's a reason why I'm telling you this. In one other encounter that will be necessary for what is about to happen here, the Lord gave me an instruction and he said to every city, every nation, and every territory I send you to, that light that came from me to you, there must be someone in that meeting that that same light will be transferred to. This is what he told me. And by the privilege of the election of grace, I've remained faithful to that call. Mm. And right now, we're about to step into, many of you are about to step into virgin dimensions in the spirit. There are graces. Job said there is a path which no fowl knoweth. That the webs of the lion has not even gotten there. So I'm standing in faith with the angel over this house. Over the next two minutes. I'd like you to cry from your heart. Let there be a desperation. Go ahead. Let there be a desperation. If someone is under the anointing close to you, you just help them so they don't injure themselves. Go ahead and pray. Holy. Holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy. Holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God? Oh, Shabala Kataparata Kaparadusiata Sadabran Begabala Kaparuska Pratesha Bedekata. It's a new season for your ministry, new season for your destiny. Oh, holy, holy, blessed is he. Who comes in the name of our God? The Lord is Madonna. Oh, hey, hey, hey. The Lord is Madonna. The Lord is Madonna. The Lord is Madonna. Now hear me. Everyone called here into prophetic intercession. A grace is about to rest upon you. Father, I'm praying right now. Men and women who understand the mysteries of the altar. Let grace rest upon you now. Let grace rest upon you now. Capacity in the spirit to travail. Until you birth the program of God. Capacity in the spirit to travail until you bet the program of God that you give him no rest until he establishes rest as a praise. Hallelujah. 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 When it was time for Saul to encounter the anointing for his destiny. The Bible says the donkey of Kish was missing. And they went three days looking for that donkey. And not finding it. They said, why do we go around wasting time? There is a man. Let's go and meet that man so that he will tell us. As soon as Samuel saw Saul, he had not even spoken to him the donkey started returning back home everything is possible depending on the influence you are under and here's what Saul said when Samuel met Saul 
Saul said, go up. I mean, Samuel said, go up. And I will tell you what is in your heart. And he took the oil and he said, is it not because the Lord, watch this, has anointed you not to be king, to be captain over his inheritance. You know what that means? To be captain over his resources. To be captain over his program. It's impossible for a territory to ignore you when he anoints you to be captain over his inheritance. Now here's what he said. Number one, that the donkey you have been looking for has gone back on its own. Number two, that on your way coming you will find three men holding two loaves of bread, supplies. It says they will greet you and they will give to you and when they do receive it you will need it for the journey number three that you will come to the garrison of the philistines and the hand of god will come upon you you will begin to prophesy he says when these things happen do as occasion pleases you because god is with you let me tell you the truth ladies and gentlemen there is no territory that cannot open up every territory has two lift gates and it can open tita and tita it can open depending on who speaks this meeting tonight I sense is not just for the envoy even though it was organized by the envoy but it's a prophetic meeting for the city of Leicester there is there is something God wants to tear down the name of Jesus now hear me some of you here have been delayed you know what delay is that you only experience you experience delay when the only thing that grows in your life is your age nothing else grows with it there is no justification to the investment that is made in your days it's a spirit it can trap men you hear people say i've been in a place for 10 years 20 years i have seen people who left back to africa from the united kingdom after decades with nothing to show can i cause delay by the power that raised christ from the dead let me release the grace for speed that grace i stand by the apostolic and the prophetic everyone who has been delayed I declare speed take that grace now help them please take that grace now take that grace now speed in your business speed in ministry speed in your destiny ten years in one year ten years in one year in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah you know what speed is by the grace of god within two and a half years of the envoy coming to leicester look what god has done that is speed that today you can be glorifying god for your property believe me it is speed now hear me please upon the earth here the greatest resource is time because destiny is a function of time when the devil wants to abort destiny he does something to your time not just your health the greatest need of man from an earth standpoint is not opportunity is time because a dying man does not need you to teach him about finances a dying man does not need to learn any principle a dying man from scripture asks for more time anything can return when there is time and when time is against you as we say there are two ways that god remedies it number one is called restoration number two is called speed when god wants to help you he brings both restoration and speed the bible says and i will restore the years he can restore years hallelujah and isaac sowed in that land and reaped that same year everything you have lost relationships 
opportunities access by the power that raised Christ from the dead I speak to you restore 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 be restored in the name of Jesus restoration 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 of things lost restoration in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please while I'm praying is it alright that they bring the prayer request please everyone can you lift your prayer requests um, now here's what I will request that we do for the sake of time don't worry your request is unique to you no one will read it but just do me a favor can you pass it to the person at your extreme left or right and then ushers let's just walk I understand there are overflows please someone can you help us attend to the overflows for those online I want you to connect we're about to pray over the overflows right now I mean over the request the Bible says be anxious for nothing then it says in everything that means there is no matter that you cannot pray about in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving he says let your request be made known don't assume let your request be made known and this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us there is a guarantee that if it is consistent with the will of god there are answers god is not just a prayer hearing god he's a prayer answering god Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Hallelujah. Whilst the prayers have been collated, please if you are sick in your body, we may not have time for testimonies, I'm out of time, but I have to minister to you. Wherever you are, just place your hand. You are trusting God for a healing miracle for yourself, your spouse, someone far or near. Lay your hands. I've been a victim of sickness and infirmity before. I know how devastating it can be. You see, please listen. The reason why we minister healing is not just to show that you carry the healing anointing. There is a law that your spirit can only coexist, remain in your body when there is a threshold level of health. The spirit of man cannot remain in his body under all conditions there is a health condition required and once your health level goes below that threshold whether you are prepared or not the spirit will have to leave you will call it death are we together so every time satan afflicts you it is an administration of death in the process if you are silent and you keep quiet it will graduate into death so when we minister to people it is part of God's commitment to give you longevity so that you can serve his purposes I am come he said that ye may have life and to have it more abundantly it's a statement that can be demonstrated when God heals he heals as a revelation of his love I have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness I have drawn you. But he also heals to demonstrate that he's mighty, that men would fear him. Place your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, every woman connected online, on site, here at this auditorium and all the overflows, who is being plagued or afflicted, be it cancer, be it high blood pressure, migraine headaches bone conditions liver conditions organ failures respiratory conditions it doesn't matter in what form and what fashion what manner when you hung upon the tree you said it is finished and in the name that is above all names even by the power that quickened jesus raised him from the dead i declare be healed now i declare be healed now from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet be healed in the name of Jesus eye conditions be healed ear conditions be healed peptic ulcer be healed lumbar problems be healed bone problems be healed 
autism be healed mental health challenges be healed digestive problems be healed blood conditions be healed organ failures be healed whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus I declare healing healing for you in the name of Jesus Christ let's have the prayer request so we'll do it fast please stretch your hands and begin to speak praying in the spirit just stretch your hands as a point of contact I'm going to go down on my knees standing in partnership with the angel over this house if you're yet to submit we'll still wait please go ahead come hallelujah I will bow my knees with Pastor Dele and we're going to agree over your request and while that happens yours is to receive as you pray in tongues remember I taught you reap as reap as they pray even in the spirit reap as reap as they pray even in the spirit please receive for those who are coming reap as reap this is the most accurate representation of your desires and the Bible says what things soever ye desire when ye pray he said, believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them. Thou shall have them. Thou shall have them. Lester, pray. Go ahead. The envoy, pray. Shabi shalaka parakato savres. Shabende veleke parus. Ebreke parakata shalabranda veleke pariata. Rapato sabedeke parusiata overturn, overturn, overturn. Give joy, birth miracles. Let children come. Let doors be open. Let peace spread to the many and cause that giving to abound to the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Let grace spread through the many. Let grace spread through the many. Let it cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Cause it thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Cause it thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. We receive answers to all these prayers, to these petitions. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. How many of you believe that God answers prayers? Now, this right here, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says we see in part, we prophesy in part. But this right here is the most accurate expression of your desires because you wrote them by yourself. Hallelujah. We do not have the faculty to know everything here. Even if revealed, we see in part. Are we together? It is the reason why this is about the most important part of this meeting. For someone right now, what you've written is to avert a death sentence. Could have come as a health condition. Some is a devourer. Some devourer eating up your finances. For some is a restoration of your marriage, your children. But it doesn't matter what the situation is. The Bible says, please listen to me. It says, this is the confidence that we have. That when we ask anything, I tell you, I sense a strong presence. Even just in this place. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop. I know that he is mighty, not because I read it in the Bible alone. I have seen his mercy and his grace. 
I know what happens when God turns a man's captivity. Indeed, you will be like them that dream. So, Father, we stretch our hands by faith as your body over Leicester, over the United Kingdom, over these requests. The Bible mandates that we make our requests known in the name that is above all names and by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Every request here is turned to a testimony. Believe. Every request is turned to a harvest of answers. A harvest of miracles. A harvest of testimonies. Now the truth is that many of the things that you have written here depends on the ministry of men. God reaches down to men through men. In John chapter 5, when Jesus met the man at Bethesda and said, Why are you here? He said, I have no man. Not that I do not know where the answer is. I have no man to help me. That when the water is stirred to take me there, I have no man. There are many of you, you have men, but you do not have the man assigned yet. I pray for you. Every human entity who was coming to partnership with heaven towards you for your sake to make these answers to happen in your life we call them by prophecy we call them by prophecy and for someone I speak to you prophetically we agree here that these Egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Lester, hear the word of the Lord. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the territory. Everything is alive depending on who is speaking. I decree and declare, I speak to the two lift gates of this city by the power that raised Christ from the dead and the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic. I speak to the spirits over this city that fights the program of God in the name that is above all names. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted ancient doors be ye lifted ancient doors in the name of jesus christ we declare that the program of god over leicester comes to pass by the spirit of grace every church represented in leicester catch fire catch fire catch fire catch fire that revivals catch fire in the name of jesus the spirits that control poverty, mental health, all kinds of degradations in marriage may cost you by the hand of God. Listen, you can be in a city and yet in the spirit you are not in that city. Because if the gates are not opened, you can be in a city and yet you are not there. Therefore, I speak to the two lift gates over this city. A father, open Hita and Tita, open Hita and Tita in the name of Jesus Christ. And now Jericho was shot, nothing went in and nothing went out. With all due respect and by the privilege of the election of grace, I pray for every servant of the Lord Jesus Christ here every challenge in ministry every mountain that has stood before you aborting the program of god fighting your apostleship in the name that is above all names i agree with you as one sent by god go forward run to a troop leap over walls run to a troop leap over walls let help us arise for you financial help us strong support systems in the name of jesus no one under the sound of my voice will die before your time 
for in Jesus mighty name we pray give Jesus a big hand clap hallelujah amen please allow me for a minute to make one last time the altar call all men both saved and unsaved based on my teachings can be called the harvest do you know for the unsaved they are still the harvest for the saved as the planting of the Lord you are still called the harvest but for this meeting for the sake of one person within this auditorium and all the overflows perhaps you were here yesterday and whilst I made the call you didn't feel a need to come but on hearing me teach this morning through the worship through the prayer the Spirit of God is speaking to you that you need to make it right with Jesus whether you are falling online or you are here I'm standing in faith as a final function before I drop the mic I want to give you an opportunity to make it right with Jesus it pays to know Jesus it pays to love Jesus it pays to serve Jesus you cannot love a God you do not know and it's impossible to not serve a God you know and love it starts with knowing him then you love him when you know how far he went for you then you serve him all the days of your life hallelujah the man who saved Billy Graham became frustrated in ministry because it looked like the church was not growing ministry was not working and one day he preached casually so and made an altar call and everyone was looking at him he felt disappointed and then one young man just strode out and stood there determined to receive Jesus he would later confess himself the old man that he felt so disappointed you know the name of the man who came out Billy Graham the man was making an altar call and was calling nations in a man he would have called himself a failure many nations came out that day they were so large he saw only one man perhaps another nation is about to come out don't rob the nations from coming out if you are the one who holds the key as a steward over the salvation of nations when he calls it pays to hearken I will count one to five wherever you are come one come whether you are making this decision for the first time rededicating your life come there's always room at the cross come let's say this is the best we can do give them a big God bless you come come to my left and to my right come apostle I think I'm a good person I'm a nice person I don't look for trouble I don't trouble anyone am I saved no sir come you can be saved when you declare the Lordship of Jesus over your life let's give Jesus this big big praise we're presenting to him a harvest a harvest of souls hallelujah praise the Lord I want to thank all of you it takes a lot of courage to come but thank you for coming because Jesus said come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and he says I will give you rest I want to thank you my dear brothers and sisters and that includes those who are making this decision perhaps you're watching me from your home your office watching as a rebroadcast it is never too late when it has to do with the business of Jesus and I want to thank you as I pray for these ones I pray that you will connect also and make this decision the Bible says as many who will come to him 
he will in no wise cast away. Can I request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to Jesus and say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power, say it, of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep those beautiful hands lifted. Father, thank you for your precious people. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. And in the name of Jesus, the grace that keeps, may that grace rest on you. I pray that you will love Jesus with all your heart and you will serve him all the days of your life. You go for whatever and backward never in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Thank you. Now, all of you in front, please look at me. I'm going to request that you just um, follow. There is a sister there, a group of people, the counselors. They will have a word with you just for a minute or two, and then you return to your seat as we clap for them, all of you in concert. <laughs> or oh, they have their own. Okay, this way or this way. Let's, let's appreciate them as they go. Amen. Amen. Pastor Dele, thank you sincerely. Thank you. I have to say this before. Just a moment. I want to thank you so much for all that you have done. It's been a brief stay, but it's been a wonderful one at Leicester. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord bless the envoy. The Lord bless the city of Leicester. The Lord bless the United Kingdom. In Jesus' name.